Okay, so we are going to learn how to look at a graph of a line and turn it into an equation using the form slope-intercept. So slope-intercept form, you may remember from a previous class, is y equals mx plus b, as I have it noted right up here on the left. The m represents the slope, also known as the rise over run. So that is when you have two points uh, identified on a line, you can go up and to the side and count how many you have to go up and how many you have to go to the side to get to that next point. You could also uh, possibly go down and backwards to get from one point to another. So that's your slope, the rise over run or the steepness of your line. Remember that lines that m increase from left to right, such as this line right here, is increasing, if you just think of a person trying to walk up this line, it's increasing from left to right. So that will have a positive slope. And ones that go down from left to right, lines that look like they're decreasing from left to right. Oopsie. Uh-oh, what am I doing here? <laughs> ones that are decreasing from left to right or going down slope from left to right are negative in slope. Okay, now with those little bits out of the way, we are going to identify a very important point, and that is B, the y-intercept, which is where the line crosses the y-axis. So right here, for this example, I have my y-intercept on the y-axis where the line is crossing at 4. Notice that the coordinates of any point on the y-axis will always have a 0 for the x value, and then you have the um, value of your y where it's crossing. So that is our b for this example. And then the m, which would be the rise over run, in order to figure that out, we could use the slope formula, or we could use visual inspection if we're looking at a graph. Now let's first identify a second point, which we need to be uh, wherever the line is crossing through a very clear intersection of the grid lines. So this looks like a really good one right here, right there, and that has the coordinates negative 3 comma 0. So negative 3 on the x-axis and 0 for the y since we don't go up or down from the y from the x-axis. So those are the points. Now I can use that in my slope formula by subtracting the y coordinates, and so that's 4 minus 0, and then doing the same thing for my x coordinates, 0 minus negative 3. Make sure to go in the same order for your x values as you did for your y. So since I started with this as my first point, this is my second point. I made sure to make that um, the first point coordinate I started with both when subtracting the y's and with the x's. You can also notice that if you just think of this line as like a table and the coordinates of a single point being partners, notice that the partners are across the table from each other. Okay, now once we get that in there, we can simplify. Remember that a double negative is a positive, so 0 minus minus 3 is actually the same thing as 0 plus 3. So we have a positive slope, right? We said before, it's increasing from left to right, so it should be a positive slope of 4 thirds, okay? So that's the way to do it for um, this, this example, but let's do a few more. All right, here's a new line. And again, we will identify the y-intercept, and then we will find another point that is clearly through two grid lines, and then we can use the point coordinates with the formula to come up with the slope. However, um, you can also use visual inspection, and I did not show this with the previous example, but we could have done it on that one as well, is we could simply take um, the visual approach where, let's say I start at this line, or this point right here at um, 0, 2, and I want to see how far I have to go down before I get at the same level with the second point there at 4, 0. Let me go ahead and label those for you. Okay, this one is 0, 2, and this one is 4, 0. 
okay? So counting down, I had to go down two. So that is a rise. If I say M is my rise over run, right, the change in Y's over the change in X's, then the change in my Y's will be two units since I had to go two down. And also that'll be negative since I'm moving in the negative direction on the Y axis. And then from there, I can notice the amount of run I'm going to have. One, two, three, four to the right. And on the x-axis, when you're moving to the right, that's in the positive direction. So that would be a run of positive four. And then that would simplify to negative one-half or even negative 0 0.5. Okay, so for this one, we have a slope of negative one-half and a y-intercept of 2. Um, but I could also have done this a couple of different, a couple of um, similar but different ways. So another thing I could have done was instead of going from, instead of going from this point first, maybe I could have started at the second point at 4 comma 0, and then I would have gone up 2, so now my rise is positive 2, and my run would have been 1, 2, 3, 4 backwards. So I still get that positive divided by a negative, which ends in a negative result. And the 2 and the 4 both have a common factor of 2, so that reduces to 1 half. If you need a quick, tiny little reminder about how to reduce fractions, remember we would always divide by that common divisor on top and bottom, and that would reduce the fraction for us, okay? So I could have done it that way, okay? And both of those methods work and are by visual inspection. But we could have also, of course, used the formula again. So let's just quickly see if the formula gives us the same answer. And you know, I love how in mathematics, there's often multiple ways of arriving at a correct answer that um, if you have multiple ways available to you, you can kind of cross-check things and that can help you be more confident. So we want to do, let's make this point 0.1 and this point 0.2. So if point 0.2 is 0, 0,2, then I'm going to take my y values first and I'm going to start with 2 minus the, sec the other y value and put in 0. And then I'll do the same order Remember for my um, x values, remember I started here uh, when I did the y, so I want to do the same thing with the x's. I'm going to take the 0 there and subtract 4 from that. So now I have 0 minus 4 in the denominator. This simplifies to 2 over negative 4, which again simplifies to negative 2. I, I meant to say negative 1 half. <laughs> so that is the answer here. Negative one half x plus two is the equation that will always give you a dot that falls on this line. Okay, let's do a two more examples. Well, one's okay. Now with this one, it is a horizontal line, and we can see that the b is negative four. Okay, let's go ahead and find another dot that goes through a grid cross section. So maybe this one. I just randomly chose one. So we have the first point 0 comma negative 4, so we'll make that point 1, and the second point is uh, 4 comma negative 4, and then we're going to plug that in to the formula here, right? So we're going to subtract our y values and subtract our x values, so the y values, um, let's see, we said we were going to make this point 2, okay, so I'm going to go negative 4 minus a negative 4, okay? And then for my x values, I'm just going to go from the same point I started at, which we're calling point 2, and we're going to do 4 minus 0 from the other point, okay? And just check that the partners are across from each other. Notice that um, 0 comma negative 4 right there, 0 negative 4, and then 4, negative 4, 4, negative 4, right there. Okay, now I can simplify it. So that's negative 4, double negative is a positive, and then 4 minus 0 is just 4, and then of course negative 4 plus 4 is going to be 0, 
which is zero. So my slope is zero. So this actually simplifies because when you multiply zero times x, you just get zero. And then a plus a minus four is the same thing as just a minus four. So we can put minus four there. And then zero minus four is just negative four. So this is actually the simplified equation that you want to enter. So notice that with an, when it's a horizontal line, you're not going to see x in the equation at all. It's just going to say y equals negative 4. And another thing that makes it um, easier to remember this, I think, is if you just realize that no matter where you go, all these points anywhere on this horizontal line, they all have the same y value, which is negative 4, no matter where you go. And it, that, that means that it does not matter what your x value is, and therefore you don't even have to really consider what your x value is. Um, the y is just negative 4. Just by saying y equals negative 4 is enough there. Okay, one more. Okay, last example here. This is a vertical line, and vertical lines are special just like the horizontal lines are special. So you're going to see a, a, what happens here. I'm just going to cause take my y-intercept of 2. Oh, wait a minute. That's not a y-intercept. That's an x-intercept. Hey, where's my y-intercept? Oh, there isn't one. Look, this red line does not cross the y-axis anywhere. So that's interesting, right? Okay, so what do I do then? Well, let's let's also investigate what happens if we try to use the slope formula here. So I just chose two points on the line. Um, I have one at 2 for x and 4 for y, and then I have one at 2 for x and 0 for y. So if I plug into the formula, let's say I do um, the y value 4 and then um, the x value 2 and then I do the y value 0 and then the x value 2 and then I have 4 minus 0 is 4, 2 minus 0 is 0. Hey, try to do 4 divided by 0 in your calculator. You're going to find that there's an error or it tells you undefined or something like that. Yeah, so the slope is undefined. There actually isn't a slope at all for this line. And one way to remember that is if you think about a person trying to walk on this, there you can't walk on it. You can't even really stand on it because it's such a fine point. You're not going to be able to go anywhere. Um, with horizontal lines, you could tell that you could walk back and forth flat and you're not going up or down. Um, but with vertical lines, there's you can't even walk on it. So horizontal lines have a slope of zero, so they actually have a slope, but vertical lines have an undefined slope, like a non-existent slope. Um, also, there is no y-intercept. So this equation does not work at all for vertical lines, right? And it even says that in the directions of the problem, it'll say, you know, to put your answer in slope-intercept form unless it's a vertical line because you literally cannot do that if it's a vertical line. So then what do we do in order to express the equation of this vertical line or any vertical line? Well, what you do is you just notice that no matter where we go, any point on this line, right, something is always the same. So this top point is 2 comma 4, the next point here is 2 comma 2, this one is 2 comma 0, and so you should be noticing a common theme here that all of the x values are the same. They're always at 2. No matter where you go up or down, the y value is irrelevant. The only thing that's really um, distinguishable from point to point is um, the fact that, or I, I, should, I said that wrong, the only thing that stays consistent or that needs to be mentioned is that no matter where you go, x is going to be 2. End of story. So that is how we state the, or how we express the equation of this line. And instead of saying y with the horizontal line, remember we said y equals a number. Well, this is a vertical line where it's the x value that's always the same. So what we want to say is that x is always equal to 2 here. And that's it.